Hi, how are you doing? So I'm making another video and sharing some great piece of history with you about the beautiful lunar mission when people supposedly landed on the moon and I'm just so fascinated by it because I think it's really unbelievable like literally unbelievable I do not believe <laughs> But supposedly it happened, so I would like to know some more. So before this thing could actually do anything, it had to be tested. And they built a great, loving, lovely, lovely uh, test vehicle, which there, which I'm about to show you. And you will actually see this thing fly. Of all time. To prepare for the Apollo flights, astronaut training included flights in many types of vehicles, including a very unusual one developed by NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center in California. It is a very unusual one. Why, why do you say very unusual? It doesn't seem very convincing, mister. Dryden engineers created a vehicle that allowed astronauts to develop the techniques for an actual landing on the lunar surface. This vehicle was called the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, or LLRV. LLRV. I would like to know what type of material did they use and what type of material the spacesuit is made of that can withstand uh, great extreme temperatures. Uh, so this is a uh, space.com article which uh, tells us what temperatures are in space on the moon and it can go uh, from minus 137 degrees or even up to minus 238 uh, yes 38 degrees or even what about this one when sunlight hits the moon's surface, the temperature can reach 260 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 127 degrees Celsius. That's above boiling point, you guys. But we are not really going into detail about this. Because, you know, uh, never mind. The vehicle utilized a very efficient tubular steel construction and an automatically controlled. It does not look convincing, you guys. Jet engine that counterbalance five six of the vehicle's weight. And that it does not look convincing is not something that I'm saying or that I'm making up. It is a fact. Here is this document, which you can find on NASA about this testing vehicle. And uh, it is. It was not really that successful, as you might think it is. Although it looks great, <laughs> kinda. So, uh, two lunar. So in total, uh, two of those vehicles were built. Uh, I'm sorry, not two, five in total. Uh, in total, five. And three crashed during test flights and training. <laughs> Out of the five, three crashed. How is that convincing? And how is that, like, uh, reliable to go to the moon? Okay, but uh, of course, I'm too curious. And I ask way too many questions. But what about the pilots? Because they was, um, they was of course right there sitting and all that stuff that they were doing, <laughs> or maybe not doing. All of the pilots, including Neil, that's Neil Armstrong, if I suppose you're that's what you mean in the first of the three accidents 
ejected safely. See also Jin blah 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 and the blah blah blah. We had very little trouble, uh, much less trouble than expected on the surface. It was a pleasant operation. Temperatures weren't high, they were very comfortable. A little so uh, funny that these people don't mention anything about those crashes but of course they're not going to do that that's like saying too much and then you might say if you believe this the lunar mission then you're gonna say well but they're so smart you know they're so brilliant of course they after those crashes they have made the perfect vehicle because of those crashes so they of course they learned from their mistake and uh, and so forth and so on okay well you are free to believe whatever you want to believe I am making this video why because first of all they are going to do it again this so-called Mars mission which has been in which they have been planning for over 50 years well, 30 years for sure. I can guide you to that speech of Mr. President Bush where he announced the space program and what their mission is. And their mission is to eventually put people on Mars and to actually like do it again. But for now, nothing is going on as far as people going anywhere beyond Earth's orbit, which is not possible. <laughs> it is not possible. Only these three people could do it. It is not a fiction, what I'm telling you. It is the truth. But uh, that's why I'm just so fascinated by it. And especially because of the technology they had way back. This was like their telephone. <laughs> Where is that? So mobile phones are not really that old. You can read this article and pause. Um, but they aren't really that old, you know? But somehow, somehow, in a very sophisticated, smart, technological way, they could transmit oh. the photos that they made on the moon of Earth and of the lunar module, which one person did, who stayed in this uh, command module or something like that, while the others were actually going to the moon and set foot on it. Uh, they could transmit that data live to Earth, to the control center on, on Earth, uh, Houston, I suppose, yes. And then they could like show it to the public. That that was possible, but on Earth that's not possible. That was not possible. And somehow right now, like fifty years later, I have trouble with my Wi-Fi on my phone sometimes. <laughs> you know, when you go like a bit too far, or even when I leave my house. Or something I don't know I'm just saying you know I'm just saying you you believe if you want to believe but there might be something going on here which is way way more important than uh, this these people might be lying about something about something that you're not supposed to know or you might be indoctrinated into slavery. I'm just saying. Or it might not be. <laughs> what do you think? Is there something going on here that nobody is supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs>